the viewer you are welcome to business and finance here on Echo television international and i am rachel tanzi despite all what central bank of nigeria is trying to do to see that the naira gains some value i mean the weeks back we saw how some sidelining of the very change operatives have led to the naira going as high as 1006 naira to a dollar and the central bank reintroduced the very change operatives back and release certain funds to them. But in spite of everything that the Central Bank of Nigeria is doing, we are still seeing the Naira dipping. And this time, we are looking at it dipping at the autonomous foreign exchange market. We are looking at NAFM. And we are seeing it from midweek, that is the previous week, to the end, to the closing of the exchange market, we saw that the dollar kept on dipping and it stopped at the value of 1,609 Naira to a dollar. Now, we will look at the data, what transpired, um, what the week started with, and then how far it went, and then what it closed in. And for the start of this week, what is the exchange rate for a Naira as against the dollar? Now, we are seeing the data from the FMDQ showed that the indicative exchange rate for NAFEM rose to 1,603.8 kobo per dollar from 1,586 per dollar, indicating a 37.95 Naira depreciation from the Naira. The volume of dollars traded in the market fell by 23.3% to $131.09 million from $171.03 million. Similarly, the Nigeria, um, um, the Naira rather depreciated to 1,580 Naira per dollar in the parallel market from 1,575 per dollar. So we're seeing that in the very the change um, operatives uh, market, where we call the black market, the unofficial market, or the parallel market, we are seeing that the dollar is doing way better than in the autonomous exchange market, where it's uh, for the middle of last week towards the closing, we are seeing it depreciating a little bit to 1580 from 1575 Naira to a dollar. Now, consequently, the margin between the parallel market and NAFM rate widened to 18.8 Naira per dollar from 11.71 Naira per dollar. Now, the volume of dollars traded in the market fell by 23.3% to $131.09 million from $171.03 um, traded, million dollar traded. Now, Similarly, the Naira depreciated again to 1,580 Naira. Now, if we look at this um, um, margin, we are seeing that at the NAFM rate, we are seeing a wide of over 18 Naira, and then we are also seeing that um, to uh, going to 11.71. That is, it was at 11 Naira the difference. Now the margin has increased to over 18 Naira. While at the parallel market, it is not up to 1,600, but when we look at what it is at our exchange market and at the exchange window, we are seeing it going from 1,603 to as high as 1,609. Now it means that for some reason, we are still trying to find value for the decision of floating the currency because in the autonomous foreign exchange market, this is the window where we have the importers and the exporters deciding what the Naira would exchange for as against the dollar. Whereas in the parallel market, this is the trade directly between the Central Bank of Nigeria and Bureau the Change Operative. So we are looking at the unofficial market, the parallel market, or the black market as we know it, which is controlled by Bureau the Change Operative, performing better than our autonomous and foreign exchange market window. So we can see that certain trades are favorable, foreign exchange trades are favorable than the other. Now, this is absolutely left to the Central Bank of Nigeria to decide what exchange market has the potential of giving the currency some value. Now, we would have to wait to see in the future. 
a decision that will be set that will be taken by the Central Bank of Nigeria to be able to make the the, the uh, our naira gain some value and above all to be stable that the margin between official markets and unofficial market would not be significantly different. Now, in the bids for recapitalization, we are seeing that the Central Bank of Nigeria is hopeful that at least five banks so far will be able to raise 1.26 trillion now. Now, we've seen in the past where certain banks have held meetings to see how much they will be able to come up with. We are looking at the, C we are looking at the GTCO, we've seen the first bank holding, we've seen Zenith Bank, we've seen um, Access Bank in the past coming up to say how are we going to raise capitals and funds for the recapitalization by the Central Bank of Nigeria for the year 2024. And we are seeing that other banks have joined into the race and the Central Bank is hopeful that with five banks only, we are already at 1.26 trillion now. Now let's look at the banks that are in this race at the moment and the measures and the procedures that they plan to follow precisely to be able to raise this funding um, given to them by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Now we are seeing that Zenith Bank will complete the pre-offer process for a 188.4 billion Naira rights issues. Now we see that also FCMB Group will interact with the investing public on its 113.98 billion public offer. So we are seeing that these banks go into the public. Now the two offers are expected to open for public subscription in the next few days. And so we are seeing that these plans have already started rolling out. Now, this will raise the number of banks in the capital market to five and the initial target to 1.26 trillion now. Now, Zenith Bank and F FCMB joining in on Access Bank, First Bank Holding, and then GTCO. Now, shareholders of Fidelity Bank PLC at the weekend expanded the scope of the bank's capital raising from its initial target to 127.1 billion now to 205.4 five billion we have access holdings to uh, is raising 351 billionaire from existing shareholders while guaranteed trust holding company that is the gtco is seeking 400.5 billionaire from the public now zenith bank and its professional advisors will sign up the offer document for a rights issue of 5.23 billion shares at 26 naira per share the shares are pre alluded to existing shareholders based on one new ordinary share for every six existing ordinary shares held as of the close of business now this is for the month of july now fcmb on the other side have launched a public offer of 15.197 billion ordinary shares of 50 couple each at seven Point fifty uh, seven point five zero naira per um, per share. Now shareholders of Fidelity Bank at the weekend authorized the bank to issue an additional eight point two um, billion ordinary shares to absorb potential oversubscription to its ongoing combined rights and public offer. So we are seeing the measures that is taken by all of these banks while when it comes to Zenith and FCMB, they are holding meetings and forging a way forward. So banks that have already started sitting down for a long time have already come to a conclusion of how much public shares that they are re releasing out there and how much per share. And we are seeing that of the Access Bank holding, we are seeing that of GTC and we are seeing that of Fidelity Bank. Now shareholders of Fidelity Bank at the weekend authorized the bank to issue an additional 8.2 billion ordinary share. Now, with a strong expectation that its offer, the first to hit the market, we're heading to oversubscription. So, so far so good. Fidelity Bank is seeing a huge and massive um, success. Now, there are indications that Fidelity Bank offers, which it should do, to close very much soon at the start of this week. So we're looking at today, and it might be extended to seek optimized position investor sentiment that has trailed its capital rising. So now Access Holding is offering about 17.773 billion ordinary shares of 
50 Cabo, each to existing shareholders at 19.75 Naira per share. The prices are okay, however, in as much as it is to the public, it's not for new people who want to be on board for shareholding, it's for those that are already shareholders, giving them the opportunity to be able to add more to their shares and of course their holding in the bank. We have a forecast, a prediction from Fitch, and I believe Nigerians will pray that this forecast come to pass. It is about our inflation, and Fitch is saying that Nigerians' inflation has reached its peak, and by virtue of that, we should begin to see a decline, a decline that could take us below 25% by the end of the year. Looking at how inflation has taken a toll on the economy, the standard of the living, uh, the standard of living in the country, of course, hardship i believe that we are hoping keeping our fingers crossed that we would wake up by the end of the year saying that truly our inflation has reached its peak and we will begin to see a decline a decline that could go below 25 percent now in its last century um, country rigs report that is fish last country rigs report on nigeria the global firm which offers financial information services market data analytic tools and rig services however said food prices will stay high due to weak domestic production caused by insecurity in agriculture regions and adverse weather condition this is said will continue to strain household finances worsen poverty and suppress private consumption in the quarters ahead now overall fixed investment will grow by 7.2 percent but at just 1.0 pp, um, um, at, yeah, 0 pp to headline growth in 2024 as it continues to remain muted despite improving market sentiments. Now, the global firm also projected that the Nigerian economy will expand by a muted 3.0% in 2024, up slightly from 2.9% in 2023, but will hit 3.5% in 2025. Inflation has peaked, but weak food production to keep prices elevated. Now, this is all from Fitch, and these are all predictions. And we can see that this prediction for our growth rate is different compared to what the World Bank is. While we are having the World Bank dropping its prediction for Nigeria, the Fitch, a Fitch is still keeping us at high stake regarding um, growth. And then it stated that the current high inflation, tighter monetary policy, and weak foreign direct investment will weigh on domestic demand, although an increase in domestic refining will support net exports. So um, I believe that apart from the prediction of what could be, Fitch is also telling us directly what would be done that will give guarantee for this inflation to drop. And we are seeing at refining um, will support net exports. So it means that so much needs to be done and we can just cast our mind on the Dangote refinery perhaps and every other refinery that needs to be functional as this will boost our net exports. Now, Fitch stated that in 2024, they project that real gross domestic product, that is our GDP will grow by 3.5% as inflation moderates. However, structural constraints will keep growth below potential. So yes, if we are able to see a gross domestic um, product increase, that is by 3.5%, just as I mentioned, Fitch is keeping us high in, in, in terms of our GDP, while the World Bank is saying the opposite, dropping us with a little bit of point. Now, we forecast that the Nigerian economy will expand by a muted 3.0% in 2024. So yes, Fitch is keeping us still high, despite all the odds looking at what is happening. Of course, there are certain things that we have to put in place for us to see this massive growth and for us to be able to see a decline in our inflation. I hope that the government and everybody, key players in our um, um, monetary and fiscal policies are listed in, trying to put all of these things in place and perhaps by the last quarter of the year 2024, we will see our inflation below 25%.
percent. Now, this might be good news or bad news, however you wish to take it, but we are seeing that Wale Adun, the finance minister, is assuring Nigerians that the federal government have exceed ways and means. Now, ways and means is the money that the Central Bank of Nigeria lends to the federal government in the meantime to augment spending based on the time the revenue is generated. And we know how much the federal government has gulped when it comes to the ways and means. We are looking at over 30 trillion naira, most of which is unaccounted for, most of which we've seen the Central Bank of Nigeria sweep it under the, car uh, under, under the carpet, where we saw the majority being taken out by the former administration of Muhammadu Buhari. And now we are seeing that Bola, President Bola Ahmed Nebu's administration is saying goodbye to ways and means the federal government will find other ways of funding our economy when the time um, in need comes. Now, um, addressing a press conference on the year half performance of the economy, um, Wale Adun is saying that the most critical thing for the president right now is how to bring down prices of food in the country. Now, using the term debts down, right? And we are seeing that we went from $108 billion to $91 billion. Government has diligently serviced all its loans and obligations without recourse to ways and means financing. The government has met all its obligations. We did not rely on ways and means. I believe that the minister is bragging that the administration has been able to perform well without ways and means and have been able to pay debts and services. Therefore, we are going that without help from ways and means, we went from $108 billion to $91 billion. Well, we can say kudos. However, the Tinibu's administration is just starting and we can tell for sure if this administration will go on other borrowing spree or not. Is wanting not to take from ways and means is another thing to go out there internationally trying to find fundings and loans. Now, we are not only talking of international debt service. These are statesmen from Wale Odu. We are talking of domestic debt service as well. In fact, he can say this government has existed ways uh, within a year of President Bola Tinibu's coming into office. This government has existed, uh, exited ways and means. There are many other things the minister is bragging, but for now, we can just focus in, on ways and means. However, there are concerns mounting. It's not enough for you to exit ways and means. There is a debt profile from ways and means from the past administration. If you are exiting ways and means, I believe it is important to pay back loans that have amounted from the ways and means for us to truly have a clean slate moving forward as a country economically. Now, lastly, we are also seeing that the federal government, and by the federal government, we are looking at what the Minister of Finance, under the leadership of Wale Edun, as his minister, releasing $500 million domestic bonds. This is in the bids. Um, we're seeing the federal government taking the direction of trying to be independent. We saw um, the windfall tax on banks. We are seeing that the ways and means are gone. And now we are seeing $500 million domestic bonds. Now, the federal government has announced plans to issue $500 million in domestic foreign currency denominated bonds in three to four weeks' time. So this is in the process. Now, Wale Odun, the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, said this during a quarterly press briefing, the same briefing where he announced that the ways and means is gone. Now, we have an open exchange rate system. It is not illegal, and so we have the issuance of a dollar-denominated security, not depending on the financial architecture of the Western world, not depending on the kind of architecture that you use to raise euro bonds. Now, we are using the Nigerian financial system, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the banking system, the investment bankers to issue $500 million in the first instance that will be available and will attract foreign currency 
held by Nigerians abroad and anybody else who buys into the macroeconomic reform effort of President Bola Tinibu. That issue is a challenge to the best and the brightest in the financial market. It is due to open the, to, in the next three to four weeks maximum. So yes, we are seeing that the um, Minister of Finance, the federal government, of course, with the approval of the presidency, are trying to see how much the government can generate locally so we don't have to depend not the metal we are not going to use for euro bonds of course these are domestic bonds within most especially for transaction from diaspora into the country we've seen how diaspora remittances has boost revenue generated through the central bank of nigeria and now we are seeing that it's not only the central bank of nigeria that is having eye on what the diaspora can bring into the country in terms of domestic bonds but now we are also seeing the ministry of finance looking towards that direction alongside um, the presidency now the, the the minister is also saying that right now depending on the success of that issue there is no talk of looking to go to the international market to raise the euro bond so we are looking at a system that wants to be local, Nigeria first. Yes, these are one too many things that we can give thumbs up and kudos to the and, uh, to Ali Edwin, the finance minister, alongside President Bola Ahmed Tinibu. And we are looking at more wins regarding our finances as an economy, revenue generation, and of course, doing everything possible to make sure that we have a Naira that is gaining as against the dollar and above all an economy that is thriving and is doing well. Thank you so much for staying with me from the beginning to the end of business and finance today. Till I come your way next time, goodbye.